joining us right now from CBS Sports, the uh, guru of all things fantasy football, a dear friend of mine, despite the fact that we have serious differences when it comes to college football and all things great and small. And boy, does he have... Boy, does he have his work cut out for him uh, this week. The one, the only, the savior of Fantasy League, David Richard. Good morning, Dave. I love Terrence and Phillips. <laughs> they are, you know, what's that uncle song they sing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one. Let's sing it together, buddy, and end our career Thelma and Louise style. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, maybe, on, maybe, maybe on a phone call. All uh, right. Are you in favor of teams being locked down that have seven losses or more from making any trades or uh, really any transactions other than injury replacements on the waiver wire? You know, we actually talked about this on our podcast this week. I think as long as you're, I mean, you can't say mathematically eliminated because then it, you know, you're going to need to break out the abacus and figure out, you know, just how many games you are back and whether or not a team with eight losses can actually make the playoffs. But I've seen teams with seven losses make the playoffs. I've been one of those teams. Fun fact, I once won a championship with a team that went six and seven oh. in, in the regular season. Yeah, you know, oh, wow. I, I stepped up in December like that, Dave. Hey, I'm, I'm well, good like that. Uh, but but I do think that, let's face it, if you're if you're one and nine, oh and ten, you can't make trades, and you should be able to field a lineup, but you probably shouldn't get first crack at waivers either. You want to make it a little more of an even playing field for everybody else that does have a shot. And I do think that even if you are 3-7 and seven right now, unless you're just playing with absolute superstars in your league and they all have great records, you still have a chance to make the playoffs. You still set your lineup. You still play, and therefore you're entitled to make trades and add players like everybody else. Uh, what is your philosophy generally on leagues that have – draft picks as far as being able to trade those during the course of the year for example everybody else i'll trade uh i'll trade nick chubb uh for saquon barkley i'll trade nick chubb and my seventh round pick in next year's draft for saquon barkley how how do you feel about those i like it a lot better in in keeper leagues and dynasty leagues where you know you've got your buddies and everybody is sure to play and and everybody's kind of playing the long-term game and those picks might mean something, and I'm I'm in a keeper league, and I'm in a dynasty league, and and I and I there's trading of draft picks all the time. I I think it's a little bit different when it's a redraft league, especially if there's a guy in your league who starts trading all of his picks. He tries to make a run, and then he doesn't make the championship, and he goes, "Oh, I'm out next year, bye." And then somebody else has to take over that team. So the one thing a commissioner might ask to do is if a team starts trading future picks, is get a down payment on the following year. And we, we do that in our keeper league. It works out just fine. No one has the intention of leaving a, leaving a roster high and dry. But I'm cool with it, and I think that adds actually a, a neat element. Just like having keepers and having a dynasty league where you keep players year after year after year, that adds an element to fantasy as well. And that's sort of the way that the game is trending right now. Remember, it used to be, it used to be that PPR was the, the new bell and whistle in fantasy football. Right. And now everybody's using PPR. And now I think the next step, the next mutation, if you will, is going to be keeper leagues, dynasty leagues, um, the, the investment in football goes further, um, something like that. I think that's what's happening next. And, and I'm all for it. I'm here for it, and I love it. That's Dave Richards, CBS Sports, joining us before we get to the phone calls and uh, texts with all your questions for David. One last thing for you, because we do like to go here. Uh, you mentioned PPR and how it was newfangled once upon a time, and now it's really the standard. Um, do you share my view that touchdown, what, what what amounts to basically touchdown only leagues, should be killed with fire? Yeah, thank you. Um, you. You should find those are probably the same leagues that use newspapers yep. to do their scoring each week. <laughs> I, Dave, you've been playing fantasy as long as I have. You you've been in those days when when uh, you had to look up a newspaper the day after the games and see the box score, and that's how you tabulated fantasy yep. points each week. It's easier to do that when it's touchdown only, but yeah, f- find an oven, put your touchdown only thing in there, turn it up to about 450, and don't turn off the oven ever. Dave Richards, CBS Sports, joining us. Dave, I'm looking at your uh, weekly fantasy stuff right now. Always great stuff. Uh, one name that stood out to me that you have as a starter this week, and I want to take it a step further and see how think you how far you think he'll go as a starter the rest of the season, is Jared Cook. Now with Drew Brees back, is he a tight end one option? 
I think you have to. You saw his target share go up last week, and it was a game that New Orleans had to throw in, and he had a season high in catches and yards. And I, I think it's going to continue. You look at the Saints, and you know that Michael Thomas is going to be that dude. You know that Alvin Kamara will catch a bunch of passes. But who's the next best pass catcher? Who's the next most reliable guy that Drew Brees can throw at? And I, I think it's Jared Cook at this point. And the matchup's great this week against Tampa Bay. You look beyond that, it's Carolina, it's Atlanta. San Francisco could be tricky, but Indianapolis and Tennessee, those are going to be good matchups too. And it's, it's hard to find a tight end that you can reliably trust week in and week out. I think we're just about at that point with Jared Cook, and it might take two bad games from him. Like if he stinks this week and he stinks next week, then he's going to be back on the waiver wire. But I think people are going to stick with him for at least the next two weeks, and that's a pretty good thing when you're talking tight ends in fantasy these days. Dave Richard with us. Aaron Rodgers is out. Uh, who, who can we scrape up for those of us who may or may not be relying on him all year long? Who's uh, yes? Yeah, who's out there? I think Kyle Allen is going to be the top name. He's taking on those Falcons, and and it's a good matchup despite what Drew Brees did last week. He didn't throw a touchdown against them, but it, it's not like the Falcons just found a bunch of really good players. They they took advantage of a couple of weak matchups on the Saints' offensive line, and it ended up working out for them. I think Kyle Allen can fare a little bit better. And then after that, it gets a little gross when you're talking about streaming quarterbacks. My colleagues really like Nick Foles and Jacoby Brissett. They're playing against each other. Don't know if I see that being a high-scoring game between the Jaguars and the Colts, but we certainly have seen Brissett play well in the past, and Nick Foles, I, I just don't know what to make of Nick Foles, because he's barely played this year. I, I, I figure he has kind of a so-so game against the Colts. I do like Sam Darnold better, and he's taking on Washington. Not the easiest matchup in the world, but Darnold has found two touchdowns, I think three of his past five games, something like that. Does give you a chance to get you 18 fantasy points if it's six-point touchdowns. He would be of interest to me as well, and then Jimmy Garoppolo would probably be next up after that. All right, so I have Rodgers in two of my three leagues. I did follow your advice before you gave it and grab Kyle Allen in one. He wasn't available in the other, but Derek Carr was available, and I grabbed Bingo. him against him. That We're yeah. okay? Okay. Uh, listen, Derek, uh, to me, and when I look at our metrics on CBS Sports, he's owned in over 80% of leagues. So I think most leagues, right. Derek Carr's already stashed for the bye weeks for the matchups that he has coming up this week and next week against the Bengals and the Jets. And really, the Chiefs after that can end up being fairly good for him as well. But I, 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 I don't include him in the streaming list because he's so highly gotcha. owned. The fact that you were able to find him, that's a gem. I would start Carr over Kyle Allen this okay. week in a heartbeat. Well, since Dave made it all about his fantasy Thank team, you. I'm going to make it all about mine. Yes. I got Cole Beasley and Robert Woods slotted to start at wide receiver right now. Should I be giving some consideration to Debo Samuel, though, who's sitting on my bench for this week? Yeah, I think you should because I think he's got a lot of upside. We know that George Kittle is unlikely to play. I think we can say the same thing about Emmanuel Sanders at this point. So if if the 49ers are going to take advantage of this matchup against Arizona and their secondary, and, and I'm not sure what the state of Patrick Peterson is at this joint in time, at this juncture, I should have said. Wow, uh, Debo's, Debo's got some high target potential. He's got some good volume, and I like him as a player, and, and, and I think that Kyle Shanahan likes him as a player, too, not just because he drafted him, obviously, but you see the playing time increase. You see the targets really spike last week. I think it continues. You see Kendrick Bourne making mistakes. Marquise Goodwin makes mistakes. Debo Samuel's going to get a lot of options, or a lot of opportunities in this game, and I think he'll be just fine. So starting him over Cole Beasley, I think, is, is a good first step. Beasley's been good in PP. PPR, 10 PPR points each of his last four games. A lot of that's driven by touchdowns. And, yeah, he's playing against Miami, but I don't see him erupting for a monster game. And you saw Debo just have 19 PPR points last week. We'll get to our phone calls next. One line open at 339-1140, one 1140 A lot of text piling up at 44-1140. Uh, one question, very popular. With George Kittle likely out again on Sunday, are you still? where do you have Jacob Hollister as a possible available replacement? Well, he, you can't use him this week because the Seahawks are on bye, but I still like where your head's at, Dave, because stashing Jacob Hollister could be a thing to do if you're streaming tight ends. So you can't start him this week, but you might have to make a move to carry, well, if you've got Kittle, now you've got to carry three tight ends. That's not ideal, but finding somebody like Dallas Goddard, Ross Dwelly would be another name. That's the tight end who's going to replace Kittle. Uh, Noah Fant, Darren Fells, Kyle Rudolph. These are all guys. Uh, Nick Boyle, I should add him. He's available everywhere. These are all decent tight ends that you could use this week as touchdown or bust types more than anything else. And you carry, you get one of them, and you get Jacob Hollister, 
And for one week, maybe you carry three tight ends and you just suck it up. But then after that, you're going to cut whoever you start this week. And you use Hollister in case Kittle isn't ready for week 12 and beyond. Now, normal host is going straight to the phones here. but my, Not this one. Not this one. Not only did I try to sneak in a tax question that was really another question about my fantasy team, <laughs> but, but, but I forgot that Hollister was on a buy, and I currently have him starting in my fantasy leagues, and I tried to pass him off. I tried to pass not only the question off, but I tried to look smart and pass it off. <laughs> right. That was just a fail on so many levels, and I could have skipped over. I couldn't even said, wow, that was a silly text. Can't believe I fell for that and blamed it on the the the, the texter, air quotes here. That was all mean. I just I just want to acknowledge it. It's probably a two to three game. It's not, it's not throwing a helmet, Dave, but it's probably a two to three game suspension for me. You know what it is? I think it's a it's a two to three question suspension where you don't get to ask two or three questions about your fantasy team. That's, That's a good idea. point. And, and, we, and we give it to the callers and the texters. <laughs> All right, let's start with Vince. Vince, thank you for holding here on with me, the moron idiot, and uh, the guru, Dave Richard. Go ahead. Thanks, Dave. Hey, Dave, um, I got a DFS question for you this week. So uh, I have a Carolina and Atlanta stack going on right now. I have Christian McCaffrey, Brian Hill, and DJ Moore in my uh, DFS cash lineup. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about doing that many uh, or that big of a stack in one game because it's just kind of backfired on me. Do you think this is the kind of game to stack, or how do you go about finding which games I should stack and if it's a good educational decision I should make or if it's just a shot in the dark? Thanks. Well, no, I, I, I think it's, it's good to do with that game. And, and the thing that I would look for if I'm doing a cash game stack is, is check the Vegas totals, see which teams are expected to score the most points. But anybody that pays attention to football should be able to figure out that a game between the Panthers and the Falcons should have more points than a game between the Redskins and the Jets, for example. And so you buy into that matchup and, you, and you're expecting a lot of points and you start the players in that game. And I don't, I don't dislike what you're doing. I think that stack is good, especially for... Well, I was going to say especially for cash, but that game might actually be better for a tournament because I think the better cash stacks are going to be like the Ravens and the Texans should be high scoring. I think the Saints and the Bucks will be a high scoring game. I would prefer those two games and to go chase stacks there uh, for your cash game lineups. By the way, Debo Samuel, nice cheap option this week in daily fantasy for cash games or tournament play. I believe he's 4000 on DraftKings and 5600 on FanDuel, something very low. Dave Richard with us, Javier on the phone, driving around in the car. Hi, Javier, go ahead. How you doing, Carmichael Dave, Mr. Richard? So, uh, I got lock on a buy. I got uh, Marquise Brown. He's going to be available, but he's questionable. My third receiver slot, I D D Chark is my number one. Should I start Zach Pascal or Will Fuller back from injury? Because, uh, you know, there's a big issue with Will, Will Fuller's hamstring. Duke Johnson's my yeah. leg. I'm just... I'm more or less stuck in between the middle or in the middle yeah. right trying to figure out Chris Fuller and Zach Pascal. The target share is going to go to Pascal, but he laid an egg yesterday or last week rather with four point three points. Hey, quit an- let the analyst analyze. Go ahead. <laughs> well, what? no, he, he was doing a good job. I, I, I know it's your, ju- it's your job. Come on, geez, it's not obvious. I, I, I do, I do think Pascal is safer than Fuller just because he he's going to get a decent amount of targets. We know it's going to happen. Brissett's back at quarterback for Indianapolis. That's a good thing as well. And Fuller, I mean, we've seen it uh, for how many years now where he's either going to catch a long ball for a touchdown or maybe three of them for a touchdown, or he's going to give you two catches for 20 yards, and he's going to let you down. So um, unless you need that Hail Mary potential in your fantasy lineup this week, maybe you went up against Baker Mayfield and you're down big already and you're feeling the pressure to put up a lot of points, I would just go with Pascal. Okay. Uh, final thing here, uh, Dave Richards, CBS Sports, uh, from my dad on the text line. Uh, Safeway has ten to fifteen pound turkeys at five ninety nine. So, uh, listen, I don't, I don't know if they have Safeways out there, buddy, but that just came in on my phone. I thought I'd share it with you. That that's a, that sounds like a good deal. It's <laughs> a really good deal. I, yeah, I, I'm getting to the Are you point. Sure where that's right. I, I, it, like, it seems too good to be true. They do it every year, and every year I end up. I've said this before. I end up getting like four of them and freezing three of them, thinking I'm going to have turkey year round. And then every Thanksgiving, I look in my freezer and I have like 17 turkeys that I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> it is what it is. Life yeah. is bad. Uh, where do we read, hear, watch, uh, and just uh, merge with your brain to try to win our fantasy leagues? Well, the reading can be done at cbssports.com. The hearing can be done on podcast form, Fantasy Football Today. You can download it 
uh, wherever you download your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, we're there. And uh, I'm going to be live in about an hour on CBSSportsHQ.com. It's our free, always-on sports news streaming site with smart analysis and lots of fantasy help. We're going to dig into DFS, as always, good buys and bad buys. I'll share with you my lineup, my colleagues Jamie Eisenberg and Adam Azer. They're going to share their lineups, too, on both FanDuel and DraftKings. Help you win a little bit of money, and it's the perfect thing to go check out. Uh, if, if your team is 1-9, 2-8, 3-7, and seven, not going anywhere in your regular league, it's time to play daily fantasy and, and salvage your season and have some fun along the way. And, and we'll get you started with that at 9 a.m. Pacific time on cbssportshq.com. There is no smarter fantasy person in the world than Dave Richard. He is our friend, and he joins us each and every Friday at 735. Have a good weekend, buddy. We'll see you next Friday. Gentlemen, you do the same. Good luck in your league. All right, thank you. That's, that's Dave Richard. And- the Drive.